Welcome to Bowling Green, Ohio, and another edition of the MAC on ESPN. The home of the Falcons, primed and ready for the 2023 home opener as the Bowling Green State Falcons welcome in the Eastern Illinois Panthers. Hi again, friends. David Wilson along with Bob Generelli and all of our ESPN crew. Welcome back to our coverage of MAC football. And a big game today as Bowling Green looks to get into the win column for the first time. And both of these teams, Bob, found out how turnovers can impact the game in their respective season openers last week. They absolutely did, Dave. For Eastern Illinois, the beneficiary of six turnovers and two pick sixes and a 27-0 shutout win, their first since 2016. For Bowling Green, five turnovers, all interceptions, and a 34-24 loss at Liberty. I know we've got a lot of storylines to talk about during the game today. We'll get to them during our broadcast, Bob, but I know you are particularly intrigued with the Bowling Green quarterback situation. Absolutely, Dave. These are two good quarterbacks. They know this offense. Uh, Connor Bazelak will get the start today. He's been on the big stage. He's, he's quarterbacked in the SEC and the Big Ten. He knows how to do things. Um, but struggled a little last week. And for Camden Orth, he really knows the offense as we see these two quarterbacks getting ready in pregame practice. Orth came off the bench last year in the uh, quick lane bowl after Matt McDonald, three-year starter, got hurt and almost led, the, uh, almost led the Falcons to a win over New Mexico State. Scott Leffler in his fifth season as the head man here at Bowling Green. I don't think uh, he could be more excited about this team and the strides they are taking as a program. And over on the other side, kind of the same thing. Chris Wilkerson in his second year at EIU, uh, he is very high on uh, the complexion of this team as well. Oh, I think for Chris Wilkerson at, at Eastern Illinois, it's a coming home for him, and he's excited about that. His whole life, he said, changed when uh, with his uh, Eastern Illinois Association, especially having played there and now coaching there, met his wife there. And for Scott Leffler, he's excited because he said this offense is uh, is fixable. And once the offense is fixed, he said, we're going to be a pretty good pretty good football team, especially a, a very good offense. Bowling Green will receive the opening kick. You saw Mosley back there with Teron Keith. And we are ready for football. Keith will take this one out of the end zone. Away we go here at the home of the Falcons. It's out to about the 20 yard line. I believe we already have a flag bomb back at about the 34. Let's see what the came down there, made the stop at about to the 20 yard line. Our referee today, get into the crew a little later on, Phil Hicks. During a return, holding, receiving team, 10 yard penalty, first down, Bowling Green. Well, they have yet to spot the ball. And so, uh, an inauspicious debut to this game, my friend. Well, this is what Scott Leffler talked about, Bowling Green's head coach. They've got to play mistake free football. And <laughs> You don't want to start with a 10-yard holding penalty on the opening kickoff. It puts you in, put you in a big hole. Well, Connor Bazelak gets the start today. We also expect to see Cam Orr, just as we spoke about a moment ago, Bob. But uh, boy, Bazelak, out of the Dayton, Ohio area, he has had a phenomenal career. Now at his third stop, but SEC and Big Ten experience. First handoff of the game goes to Terrion Stewart. Very modest gain as they run him out of bounds over on the far side. A young man they are very glad to have back in the fold. Extremely. Uh, the Bowling Green offensive coaching staff couldn't have been more excited to have him back. And uh, they feel confident that from last week and what he did and what they did, they're going to be able to run the football this year. Second down and nine after a pickup of one. Stewart uh, played his high school ball at nearby Sandusky, Ohio. Back to Stewart, trying to pick his way forward. And does get in between the tackles. And wrestles his way out to about the 14-yard line before he is brought down by cornerback Russell Dandy of EIU. And right now a third down and seven for BG. Oh, and one, Eastern Illinois on the road for the second week in a row. 
27 to nothing win at Indiana State a week ago Thursday. Bays lack on a passing down. Just underway here at Doit Perry Stadium and a nice connection over on the far side. Good for a first down. And that, that's what that's what Scott Leffler and the Bowling Green offensive staff is looking for. Patience, go through your progressions, find the open man. And again, they said how many times in our calls this week, Dave? People were open last week. They just didn't get them the ball. Guy we expect to be calling a lot today, Bob. O.J. Hilaire, the fellow Glade Florida product, holds that one in. He is now up to 37, 37. Conse uh, consecutive games with at least one reception. Which is number five in the country, I believe, active streaks. Wide open in the middle. That's Abdul Ibrahim with his first grab. And, and O.J. So Hilaire's first roommate. Two catches go to the roommates. Go to the roommates. Both from both came here from Alabama A&M. And looks like Bowling Green's going a little tempo here. He's like gets him to the line quickly. First drive of the game, no score. Great to have you with us today for our coverage of Mac football here on ESPN. A change of pace back there. I believe that was Teron Keith. Where's number zero in white? Dayland, Florida. Three carries last week, 69 yards. To talk about Basilak last week, Bob, 6 of 21, 71 yards, three INTs. He just couldn't get comfortable last week. Second down, about five and a half yards to go, and Basilak will be on the move. Nice catch on the screen, makes a man miss. More open field in between the hash marks. A nice connection to Harold Fannin Jr., the tight end out of McKinley High School in Canton. Again, an emphasis, Dave, that the, the Bowling Green offensive staff made this week is get the ball to their tight ends. They're good, they're good catching the ball and even better when they run downfield with it. So this is this is an emphasis for the offense today. Use their tight ends. Close to a 35-yard reception there. And they're inside the red zone on the 19-yard line. BG clicking on their first drive. Big pile up, maybe a yard on that particular running play. This is the kind of drive Connor Bazak needs. It's successful, they're moving the ball down the field, mistake free, and he's, he's, he's feeling feeling more comfortable as he uh, as he learns this offense. Because again, this is only the second game he's starting here at Bowling Green. That was Jason Patterson with his first carry. It's uh, a deep running back room for BG. Bazelak over the middle and finds Levi Gazarek. Makes a diving catch at about the 15-yard line. I believe him at third down, about five. Hit him on the crossing route. Had more room to run if he hadn't lost his feet. BG last year on third down. Only 34%. Bays lack to throw. Hilaire outside the 10. Lays a hit on a couple of Panthers at about the five yard line. He has the first down. And brought have, down by Mark Aitken. He'll have to go sit down for a play now that that helmet popped off. He caught the ball in his helmet. Ball in his left, the helmet in the right, and a first down. That, that's an all-conference receiver, Dave. First and goal from the six-yard line. Bazelak was going to keep it, and flags fly, and there'll be a procedure penalty against BG. Again, mistake-free football in the red zone is important right now for Bowling Green. And here comes, I believe, uh, Cam Orth is in the game. So Orth. Will spell Bazelak, who marched them uh, all the way down the field after starting at about the 15-yard line. Three receivers stacked on the left. Orth across the 10. 
no further as he got outside the painted numbers. And last week, Orth came in and really gave a jump start to this offense, and his running ability was a big part of that. He hit the 10-minute mark. And O.J. Hilaire, Dave, now is uh, tied for fourth in active streak with that 37 catches in the nation. Second down and goal from the 10-yard line. Bazelak back in. He'll go to the left corner of the end zone. Hilaire, touchdown, B.G. Falcons. Hilaire made that look very easily, very, very easy. Beat his man and just went straight to the corner. It was an easy, easy pitch and catch for Connor Bazelak. And, and Scott Leffler said that again, Bowling Green's head coach. They wanted to get the ball on the perimeter. We'll see it again right here. He had a touchdown catch a week ago, his second of the season, nine yards, and an early score for the Falcons. Easily got behind the corner, didn't get any help deep. Here we go for the PAT. Kick is up and no doubt about it. it was booted through by Brett Galetti, number 98 in white. Seven to nothing BG. It'll be Eastern ball as they try to answer when we come back after this timeout. At boom. BG scores first on an 11 play 90 yard drive. It took five minutes off the clock and quite an opening statement by them. Absolutely, and uh, Leffler and his offensive staff couldn't have scripted it better. And again, get your offense in a rhythm, get them feeling comfortable, get your quarterbacks feeling like this is a system that they, 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 just, need, they just need some patience and practice. Both teams, head coaches told us during the conference calls that they want to be balanced and I thought BG really used the run and the pass effectively that entire drive, almost the length of the field. I, I agree, Dave. I think I think Scott Leffler wants to run the ball so he can throw the ball, and he's excited that they can run the ball this year, at least early on in this season. Here we go. Daniel Luomo kicks off, and it's taken by an up back at about the 23-yard line, close to a 10, maybe 11-yard return for Eastern Illinois. Panthers come out, first and 10, and they will try and answer with their transfer quarterback, Pierce Holly. You see him right there, Bob, number three. A transfer out of Georgetown where he put up some pretty impressive numbers. Uh, over 28 yard, 100 yards passing, uh, 18 touchdowns last year at Georgetown as a starter. So uh, this kid knows how to dist distribute the football. So I think he's uh, he was impressive in the opener last week. Holly drops back to throw on first down, and he has a man wide open, caught. That's good for a first down to Darius Smith, who gets a start today. They are missing Justin Thomas and Cooper Wilman from their wide receiving core, and Smith makes his first catch of the season. And a, and a big thing for Bowling Green's defense, their staff stress this week was eye discipline. Keep, keeping, staying focused and keeping your eye on where the ball's going. It's a nice 22-yard pickup. Carrying the football, Kevin Daniels. And he just powers his way forward right over the big left guard, Max Steinman. Kevin Daniels, the transfer out of Northern Arizona. 13 carries last week, 57 yards, also caught one pass. Panthers offensive coordinator Joe Davis couldn't be more excited about Kevin Daniels on our call. I mean, he's excited that, to have him back there. He's, a, he's an every down back in, as, far as, uh, as far as he's concerned. Tight formation here. Panthers in all blue today on the road against the Falcons. Holly got it away very quickly. It was caught by Anthony Manavis, the tight end, and he rumbles ahead for a first down. It's all the way to the 28-yard line. Just slipped him out across and out, out in the flat, wide open. Both, both offenses having early success today, Dave. 
Two completions right out of the starting gate for Pierce Holly. He's out of Arvada, Colorado. Linked by a running back on each side. On the run, Kendy Young, the junior, out of Calumet, Illinois. Quickly tackled by Ali Saad, the defensive end for BG. Well, D BG's defense, their, their challenge is going to be it's a deep running back room for Eastern Illinois with Daniels and Young and MJ Flowers, and, uh, and Eastern Illinois plans on using all of them. So it's, it's going to be a challenge for Bowling Green today. They're, I think their running backs are deep, and they're going to be fresh. Three-man BG front ready to come charging. Sod's tackle forced a one-yard loss. Second down and 11 from the 29-yard line. Holly cocks his arm. Now he tries to run for it. Everybody was covered downfield. Plows ahead. Maybe got uh, a yard or two. That uh, play broke down very quickly with the pressure coming. It did, and I think I think the key for Bowling Green's defense is settling in early. Last week it took until the second half before they got there, so the quicker they get there, the quicker they'll make life a little more challenging for Pierce Holly. Darius Lorfields made the tackle for the Falcons. Third down and nine, seven to nothing BG. 6.45 to go first quarter. Clock is moving. First BG scoring drive went 90 yards and took five minutes. Holly, the far side of the field, pass is caught over there by Justin Bowick, and then forced backwards. The forward progress will get him a first down to the 20-yard line. That's a seven-yard pickup. Bowick was one of those returning uh, receivers from a year ago. Jordan Oladokun made the stop, Bob, way over there. That was a long throw for a seven-yard pickup, but... Uh, it, does think, leave them short. I thought they first were going to move the sticks. No, but they're going. A, they're going for two. it. I think. I think this is a st this is a statement because uh, they're all their preseason all conference kicker Stone Galloway is not available today. Fourth down, two yards to go. They need to get to the 18. Holly fires a line drive pass. It's caught by Eli Merza. That's good for a first down to the 15, and they do move the sticks this time. The drive lives on for Eastern Illinois as they look to try and answer an early BG touchdown on a whiteout afternoon here at the Doit. Holly's impressive. He gets the ball out quick. He's got a strong arm, and he finds his receivers. Stationed in the shotgun formation behind Drew Wilder, the center. It's a reverse to Mirza. Trying to turn the left corner. Now he'll throw it to the end zone. It's out of bounds. So the trickeration, but uh, kind of ran out of room on that side of the field. He did. They, 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 were, they ran that same play last week, except without the pass. And, and Mirza, Mirza turned it into a 27-yard gain a week ago. But, uh, uh, again, the Panther coaching staff really likes Eli Mirza. He's another one of those 12 transfers they had come in. Smith was the intended target. You could see in that replay, and we see a, another one right here. He was open. He was open. But the throw sailed a little left. Second down and 10 for Eastern Illinois out of Charleston, Illinois. Holly on the move. Pressure coming from the Falcons. He'll get rid of the football. And that's exactly what Bowling Green's front needs to do. Get, get Holly off his spot. Get him uncomfortable. Don't give him time to sit back there. Goes through his progressions and let him pick and choose what he wants to do. Falcons were in hot pursuit. Evan Branch Haynes leading the way. Third down and 10. So they've had a fourth down conversion inside the red zone. Now they are looking at a third and 10 from the Bowling Green 15-yard line. 68 degrees at game time, dry. The winds are fairly calm. Perfect conditions for the Falcons' home opener. Timeout taken by EIU. So Holly takes time in a very key third down situation with 5.04 to go here in quarter number one. See uh, Chris Wilkerson and his crew down there. Chris Wilkerson, a former 
EIU player could not be happier to be at his alma mater. No, he's, he's so happy to be where he is. He, he likes Eastern Illinois. is a special place to he and his family, so he is, um, he is ecstatic about where he's at and uh, where he thinks the program is going in year two. Five oh four to go here in the first quarter. Eastern Illinois. All right, we we uh, will take a break here as uh, they take the timeout, and we'll be right back to Bowling Green with more Mac action. It's really important. Coming up for the EIU Panthers. First quarter action, 5.04 to go here at Dwight Perry Stadium where they have a great crowd. A whiteout over there where EIU is trying to snap off this important third down play. Pierce Holly has the lines down. Mirza in motion. They'll line up in a slot position on the right. It's a screen pass. It's caught. 10. Five and a touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Kevin Daniels out of the backfield with the catch, the run, and the TD. You got to give Eastern Illinois OC uh, Joe Davis a lot of credit. Dialed up a nice play, just got Kevin Daniels out in the flat in space. He's athletic, he's big, he's fast, and um, result is a touchdown. Coming right at you on the replay, a little stiff arm. Daniels. He is, he is a, he's a load. He's, he gets up ahead of steam. He's a big kid, and uh, and like I said, the Eastern Illinois coaching staff can't can't get any more excited about this young man. His second catch of the season and his first TD. The point after bangs off the left upright, and it is no good. And EIU will have to settle for six after a 10-play, 65-yard drive. BG Ball. When we come back after this. Timeout. A nice return. Brandon Guido got him down. And so here come the Falcons again with Connor Bazelak, who was uh, red hot in that first drive. See, see what the Falcons can do with possession number two. Pierce Holly certainly showed why he beat out Joan O'Brien, last year's returning starter quarterback for the Panthers. 4.51 to go, and this drive starts at the Falcons' 23-yard line. Running play to Terrion Stewart. Makes a man miss over outside the numbers, and then got some extra yardage. Plenty for the first down and more, as Stewart just refused to go down to the turf. Uh, I think he got through the initial hole, and the rest of that was all him. Uh, Bowling Green's offensive line had a good surge, and then he... He added a little extra at the end there and um, picked up a few extra yards, which is what they need. They need to, they need to be able to run the football because if you can run the football, you can certainly throw the football. That was a 15-yard pickup by Terrion Stewart. Bazelak to throw. Man open over on the far side. And they go to Harold Fannin, Jr. He's out of Canton, Ohio. Two catches last week, 19 catches a year ago. It is week two for both of these teams. Falcons 0-1, Eastern Illinois 1-0. And, and that running game makes the play action that much more effective. Russell Dandy was able to run Fannin out of bounds. Second down and three for the Falcons. This drive started at the 23 and a high snap off of Bazelak. Stewart caught it, and then the Panthers come in waves and wipe him out Back at the 41, that'll be a four-yard loss. Nick Coates in there first, along with defensive end Nicholas Oliveira Chase. Uh, unusual mistake for uh, the center, Alex Alex Padgett. That's uh, the Bowling Green offense staff told us that this week that that's the leader on that offensive line. So he's he's the one they look to to, to make things right, calling the signals and all. So uh, a very, very uh, uh, unforced error there. Third down and six. Football resting at the 42-yard line of the Falcons. Seven to six BG. Bazelak over the middle. Pass is caught. Man open. Not a lot of running room after the catch. 
Austin Osborne makes the catch for the Falcons. Managed to hang on to the football under duress as they were trying to rip it out of his hands on the way down. We got our first punt of the day. Fourth down and four. BG punter is Sammy Sir, the 27-year-old out of Oak Park, Australia. True sophomore. Long snapper is George Carlson. Back deep is Mark Aitken, a junior out of Chicago. He's standing at about his own 15. Line of scrimmage, the 44. This one bounces and takes a, a nice Falcons bounce, and they'll just let this one roll all the way down to the six-yard line. That's a 50-yard kick with no return. Nicely done by Sammy Call Me Sir. <laughs> and a very interesting background that young man has. After graduating from high school, worked as an aviation protection officer at the Melbourne Australia Airport. Well, Eastern holds, Bob, after they went down, punched it in, and they get a defensive stop, and those are crucial on the road, especially when you think of an FCS FBS matchup. Very true, Dave. I mean, and Pierce Holly showed that he can move this football. Kevin Daniels is the real deal, and, and Eastern Illinois knows how to win on the road. They've done that before in Max Stadiums. So they're pinned back deep at the six as this drive begins. Seven to six, Falcons. Holly in his own end zone had to hurry and step back across the goal line and is sacked back there at about the two. Back into the back end of the Bowling Green defense helped help cause that sack, Dave. He Pierce Holly really didn't have anybody to go to, and that pocket collapsed on him awful fast. Hunter Deo made the stop for the Falcons. After the sack, they'll keep it on the ground. A flag comes out. It was going to be a handoff. But uh, whistles blew. Flags went flying. Mentioned Phil Hicks is our referee today. We'll give you the rest of the crew after we hear this call. Offense, all the living players are not set. Second down. Procedure penalty. Working with Phil today, Chris Williams II is our umpire. Jeffrey Johnson, the head linesman. Side judge is Jen Burke. Gary Schildmeyer is the line judge today. Sam Banks at field judge. Yvonne Daniels, the back judge. Leah Berard is our center judge. So they are making the impartial calls in the ball game. Eastern backed up a little further, and that one way off the mark over on that far side for Diaria Smith and, uh, actually hit the yard marker on the fly but now looking at a long third down and 14 what do you pull out of the playbook here Bob and it's, I think that's what the uh, offense coordinator Joe Davis is trying to figure out that's his job right a situation here for BG where they can really get the field tipped in their favor you can flip the field here with a stop Will not take any chances running it with Kendi Young. And he does get him a little room to punt as he works his way out to the nine-yard line. About a seven-yard run. But uh, with the penalty yardage, uh, they're still looking at a fourth down and seven as we get to the minute mark. One minute to go first quarter. But he wasn't that far away from breaking that. He, he uh, Bowling, Green, Bowling Green made a nice play on that because he was not that far away from breaking that, probably picking up the first down. Yeah, that was Joe Sipp Jr., the Will linebacker, who made the stop for BG there. Who was he's, BG's leading tackler a week ago against Liberty. He made a nice play and saved, saved the first down. Punter is Jacob Horvath. Kick that uh, lands at about midfield. It will be returned by Teron Keith. Good job by the Eastern Illinois Gunners to get down there. And a, a nice kick by Horvath that uh, landed just shy of the midfield strike. 
Horvath earned honors last week, too, after their win over Indiana State, was the uh, was the freshman of the week with the Big South OBC. Yeah, we've got two Australian punters in this yes, game. Yes, we do. And I believe Bowling Green has the distinction of uh, being only one of four or five schools with two international kickers, their punter and their place kicker. Well, BG indeed does get great field position. First and 10 at the 50 with 27 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Entertaining game so far. Seven to six Falcons. Bazelak with all day to throw. Flag comes out as the screen pass was complete. Teron Keith made the catch. He was hit immediately, but flags were coming out as that ball was in the air. It's going to go against the Falcons. Holding offense number 53. Well, they got Tunde Fadokasi on the hold, the starting left guard. Well done with that name, very impressive. Tunde, pretty interesting story. He's out of uh, New York City, transfer out of Rutgers, and a accomplished drummer. Drummer, I saw that in his uh, his video on Instagram is uh, extremely popular. Clock moving, 15 seconds left. I don't think there will be another play. So I think BG will take a 7-6 lead into the second quarter. We are just getting warmed up here at Doit Perry Stadium on a very comfortable Saturday afternoon for Maction here on ESPN. Second quarter, play-by-play, -play, straight ahead. Eastern Illinois' 27 to nothing win against Indiana State in their season opener on a Thursday night at Terre Haute. They got two touchdown returns on interceptions. And the interesting thing, Bob, they came back to back in the late second quarter. We saw the Tyrus Harvey pick and then the Nise Burt 67 yard. Interception return for a touchdown. You talk about a double whammy. That really set the tone for the rest of that game. It did. And, and you, the case is usually when you win the turnover battle, you win the scoreboard at the end of the game. Underway here in the second quarter. BG with good field position. They gained seven on the first down play. And now it's second and three. Falcons leading seven to six. David Wilson along with Bob Generelli, all of our crew. Snap it back to Bazelak. On the run, right side. See who carried that. I believe it might have been uh, Patterson. Jason Patterson with another carry. He's out of Jacksonville, Florida. And 683 yards on the ground a year ago with some significant carries. It was tackled by Kalen Drakeford, the strong safety of Eastern Illinois. Panthers in their all blue and black uniforms. First down for Patterson. Ball on the 37-yard line. On the run, that's to Ron Keith. You can tell Bob he is an explosive player and capable of breaking into the defensive secondary at any time. He is, and Bowling Green's offensive line is settling in nicely now. This is something, again, their offensive staff talked to us about this week is getting settled in, you know, correcting the issues up front and protecting the football. And they've got three very good running backs, and they they're, they are using those backs to their utmost abilities right now, and that's helping Connor Basel. Elijah Watt Tolbert brought to Keith down. Second down and six. Screen pass to Keith outside the numbers. It's across the 25 and out of bounds near the 20. That's good for a 13-yard pickup. Another BG first down. The Falcons are on the move. And again, Bazelak does a nice job here. He looks down. He's got his man open. Eye discipline following it and gets him the ball. Gives him the ability to go upfield with it. 
Mark Aitken got him out of bounds. First down and 10. Falcons back in the red zone. 20-yard line is the line of scrimmage. Early second quarter here at the Deut. Bazelak off his back foot. It's caught by Fannin. He will drive all the way down close to the goal line. Harold Fannin Jr. lunging but coming up just about a yard short. If that. Great job by Bazelak, Dave. Great job. He, he saw it. He saw the rush coming. He dumped it over the middle wide open and let his tight end run with the football and do what he does best. And again, this is what Scott Leffler said last week that Bowling Green didn't do, and that was hit the open man over the middle, and they had it last week versus Liberty. Connor Bazelak, 11 for 11 so far in this game. They'll keep it on the ground. Terrion Stewart says, thank you very much. I'll finish the drive. A one-yard touchdown run. Terrion Stewart. 13-6, Falcons. And the Falcons made that look easy. It all started with their defense, Bob. They got them the ball at the 50-yard line. It started with their defense. Their offensive line's playing well. You know what? Credit to Connor Bazelak. He's playing He's playing within himself. He's, uh, he's managing the game, and he's doing what uh, – he's correcting the issues he had from a week ago. Alan Anaya. Missed the extra point, or I should say kicked his extra point perfectly last time, and he does so again. So Anaya two for two on PATs. Bowling Green up by a touchdown. The opener when he was six for 21. He's his body language is a lot better than it was a week ago. He looks quite relaxed over there and and feeling good about what, what he's doing with the football when Bowling Green has it. Walschlager at right tackle, Pabst the right guard, Paget at center, Fadokasi the left guard, Cam Stewart the left tackle. They've been doing a great job giving uh, Bazelak time to operate. Absolutely, and Pabst is 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 a is a kid that the. Uh, Bowling Green offensive staff's very high on. He's a former defensive lineman. They moved over to offense, and they're very high on his future playing in that position. Out of Cincinnati, Mola. Yes. Here is the kickoff. We'll drift all the way back to the three-yard line. Eastern on the return, but a great open field tackle by the Falcons. BG with the Gunners at full speed. That's Charles Rosser, number 13, who came in there and got him down. Well, that epitomizes special teams being special right there, right? Another look right there. Rosser coming in like the heat-seeking missile. First and 10, the ball on the 16-yard line. 12.04 on the clock, second quarter. Eastern Illinois will try and answer. Kevin Daniels, who scored a touchdown earlier. It's brought down there by Joe Sipp. BG playing in their 105th season of college football. Lost in the Quick Lane Bowl a year ago, 24-19 against New Mexico State. Which was a huge step for Scott Leffler in this program, first bowl game since 2015. Pierce Holly, 14-6 Falcons. Ball batted down. Fortunate for Eastern, it wasn't intercepted. Diving breakup by Davon Ferguson, the former Kansas Jayhawk. And Ferguson, boy, this has to be a sweet feeling for him, Bob. Back-to-back season-ending injuries the last two years. And that, that's a great athletic play there. He read the quarterback's eyes the whole way. And he, he, read it, he read it perfectly and made a, made a tremendous play. So third down and nine. Clock stops with the incompleted pass. Falcons looking to put some pressure on Holly. Mirza in motion for the Panthers. Screen pass, caught, but no chance. It's Joe Sipp again. He has been all over the field so they, far. They read it. They read the screen. They, 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 they knew screen was coming. They read screen. Joe Sipp was all over that. Pass was caught by MJ Flowers, the redshirt freshman tailback. Sip sees it, and he just he's, he's hit straight for the ball. He, he didn't let anything happen between him and the ball. He was going straight for it. 
he knew it was coming. Turns into a loss of two. Fourth down and 11. And Jacob Horvath will have to punt from his own goal line. Line of scrimmage, the 11. Falcons return man back at the 40. Horvath gets a running start. High kick will take an EIU bounce. It's scooped up and brought back for a short return. Again, close to midfield for BG. They'll have the ball when we come back. You've earned it. I am the commissioner of my fantasy football league. Impressive. Thank you. Oh, this is so much fun. We've been waiting to talk about this in our lead up to the ball game. 20 years ago, ESPN College Game Day was right here in Bowling Green for a massive game between Northern Illinois and BG. Falcons and the Huskies. Can BG prolong that home field winning streak? Can Northern prolong its overall winning streak? One of the biggest MAC regular season games ever. Kirk Herb Street. Well, I look forward to seeing these these players. Michael Turner's had such a great career. Looking forward to seeing him. But I think the difference in this game is revenge for Bowling Green and Josh Harris's ability to make the play on the run and throw. I like Bowling Green to win it. Rita, former Husky head coach, is going with free to the Falcon. Look at the gloves. Look at the and the gloves. <laughs> It's unanimous. Mind. We thank you for joining us from Mac Country. The Buckeyes, the Hoosiers are next to see you later. Oh, what a moment that was for the Mac. We'll get Bob's thoughts on that here as we get back to play. BG takes over at their own 44-yard line. Again, keeping it right in between the tackles. They went to uh, Jason Patterson. Modest gain, but uh, there it is, Bob. I know that was a, a big day for you in the conference and uh, Lee Corso with the Falcon head. 2003 was such a special season for the Mid-American Conference, Dave, and that was a special day. That was a lot of work uh, getting that, getting it, pull, pull that off, but it was so much fun and the energy and excitement that came to Bowling Green's campus and for the conference as a whole was, was tremendous and, and, a, and a great memory. Second down and eight. Baselack, another completion all the way to the Eastern 35-yard line. Osborne makes the catch. Austin Osborne. They're, Bowling Green's receivers are open. Over the middle, on the on the edges, they're open. And they get the ball to the perimeter, which is what they want to do. 17-yard strike there for a first down. Now right down the middle, just out of the reach of Abdul Ibrahim. And Bazelak proves that he is human with an incompletion. <laughs> a little behind him, but he again, he was open. But uh, that, 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 that game day was a, a fun day. But here, Ibrahim is open. Ball is just a little too far from him. He has to stretch a little bit. But that, that was a fun day, and, and two ranked teams playing on an ESPN platform on Saturday for the MAC was tremendous. They'll be celebrating that, recognizing it on the 21st of October. Jason Patterson getting a steady diet of handoffs as he rumbles up the middle. It's going to be a third down, about one. There's the bobblehead of Lee Corso that they'll be giving away. Again, that's on October 21st right here. The one thing that gets forgotten about that 2003 season is that Northern Illinois finished the season 10-2. Their only losses were right here at Bowling Green and at Toledo. They finished 10-2 and, 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 and did not go to a bowl game. There's a whistle and a timeout taken by Eastern Illinois. So a third down and one. Timeout, and Illinois. Chris Wilkerson. Uh, Chris Wilkerson decides to use his second timeout of the half and try to draw up a defensive stop. So we'll see what happens on this big play in just a moment. Thanks, no surprises. Only at Metro.
14 to 6. Bowling Green State leading, visiting Eastern Illinois here at Dwight Perry Stadium. We have a third and one coming up from the Eastern Illinois 26-yard line. Falcons are two of three so far today on third down. Bazelak will be under center on this play. And they will throw it. Screen pass. Teron Keith has it. First down. Out of bounds near the 15-yard line. They needed one. They got 11. And Teron Keith got out in space because of that play action under center. He was able to just slip out underneath things. And this was this was a this was a nice passing catch. Great, great play by Connor Bazelak. Great read. Got 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 a good player with speed out on the perimeter. Great play dialed up by the co-offensive coordinators, Max Warner, Greg Nosale. I think everybody in the stadium was expecting a run straight ahead to try to get the one yard. First and 10 from the 15-yard line. That's Orth. Camden Orth takes the snap, makes a run for it. He's tackled by Elijah Watt Tolbert after about a three-yard gain. 6'3", 225, Dave. He's not afraid to use it when he, when he tucks the ball and goes, goes forward. He's a, he's a north-south guy. Right now, 8.03 on the clock. Plenty of time left second quarter. Right now, a one-score spread in this game, 14-6. But the Falcons knocking on the door in the red zone. Bazelak is back in. They'll snap it to him, and he'll hand it to Terrion Stewart. And uh, got to pass the initial defensive line, but then gets brought down at about the 11 by Anthony Shockey, the linebacker out of Lombard, Illinois. Two tackles last week. And Shockey's a player that the Eastern Illinois defensive staff is very high on. They said he's they said he just has a nose for the ball. He's very active and fi he, see he always seems to find the football. Well, another third down now. Third down and six for the Falcons. From the 11-yard line, Bazelak has been outstanding in this first half. He'll drop back, and the pressure is coming. They force him out of the pocket. He looks to the back corner of the end zone. Pass is caught right in the corner, and it is a touchdown. Falcons, Abdul Fatai Ibrahim just did drag his feet, Bob, on the boundary line. And they brought Ibrahim all the way across the field, Dave. They put him in motion. They put him in motion. He came across the middle of the field. They brought him all the way across, and Bazelak locked in. He rolled, saw him there, and made a made a great pass, great pass and catch. Oh, but, you saw the tire chips flying up as he drug his toe down there. Just inbounds. 20 to 6, Falcons. Ibrahim got lost in the crowd over the middle. Anaya. Kicks out of the hold of Jack Sauter. It is up and it is good. Falcons have three touchdowns in the first half, and they take a 21-6 lead over Eastern Illinois. Panthers ball coming up. College football on ESPN. There's the drive chart for BGSU in the first half. The last two touchdowns, Bob, 50 and 56 yards. The field position battles being won by the Falcons. It absolutely is, and I think if Scott Leffler were to give it a grade, he'd give this a, a solid B-plus first half. Connor Bazelak, 14 of 15, 185 yards, two touchdown passes. Bowling Green's offensive line, give it a ton of credit. They are doing a great job, not only for the running game, but protecting Connor, Connor Bazelak. Here's Jack Sauter with the kickoff. A high end-over-end -end kick will be taken at about the five-yard line by the Panthers, and the return man upended. There are flags flying all over the place. I think that ball came out. Lazarek Eatman, the return man, number 36 in blue. Uh, he took quite a hit. He's still got the ball. 
officials talking things over. We'll hear from Phil Hicks. Bill return, holding, receiving team number 46. Two out of three, first down, Eastern Illinois. So we'll see. That uh, return again, Bob, it is, uh, you know, returning the ball is fun. It's these sudden stops that uh, tend to make it a little less enjoyable. Yeah, it, the ball didn't come out, but he hit, he, he, he took a lick. And again, Bowling Green special teams being special. That was another emphasis for the coaching staff this week, making sure their special teams set up the opportunity to get good field position when they got off, when their defense got off the field. Abby McGarry made that stop on special teams. Outside linebacker. It was the quintessential gunner there. Holly will try and move him down the field. Screen pass over to the far side. It is complete and a good first down game, but they do start this drive on the 10-yard line. Pierce Holly and the offense in general needs to try to capture that uh, that rhythm and magic they had in that first drive when they answered Bowling Green's touchdown. Area Smith made that catch. So second down and four. 21 to six Falcons. Clock on the move here, getting late in the second quarter. Ali, a short drop and up top he goes. And it is almost caught. And the pass ruled incomplete, but flags come out for pass interference. Smith again was the target. Defensive coverage by Darius Lorfields. We'll get the call right here. Oh. That's a double white. Yeah, you've got flags in the offensive backfield plus the one thrown downfield yeah, Dave I think they're talking a potential late hit on the quarterback what the area Smith almost came up with that ball yeah, despite the, the contact pass in the fence, number 15 point is declined personal foul left the passer Number 90, the penalty will be accepted. Automatic first down. All right, so they take the roughing the passer penalty. And we'll see this play out right here, Bob. Smith gets tripped up. Yeah, the ball was gone, and they came in high. His hands were up. He might have made contact with the, in the head and neck area. That will move it out to the 31-yard line. First down and 10 for Eastern Illinois as they try to come up with an answer here before the end of the first half. Running right over the left guard and left tackle that time. Another run by Kevin Daniels. And that's what EIU needs to do. They need to get Kevin Daniels back involved in this offense because he's really, other than the touchdown he scored, he's the last couple of possessions, he hasn't really touched the football. Orfields came in, made the stop for the Falcons. 5.45 to go. Picking up just a bit. Very cloudy and overcast, but dry. There was some movement on the line. It'll be a false start against Eastern Illinois, and they'll walk off five yards on the penalty. It'll be second down and nine. Bowling Green, the Bowling Green secondary helped the officials on that one. They helped the headlines when make that call. Daniels today. Four carries for 19 yards. Caught a pass for a touchdown of 15 yards earlier. So he's been a playmaker. Holly, 7 of 10 for 64 yards. Most of those completions, Bob, on that first drive. Exactly. So Pierce Holly and Kevin Daniels need to get back involved in this offense quickly. Holly takes the snap. Line drive pass, it's caught at the 40-yard line. Up to the 44. 
Nicely done. First down, Eastern Illinois. Holly stood in, stood, stood in the pocket. It was, it was They were bringing pressure. Bowling Green was bringing pressure. And they've been getting to him, and that's what getting him up, getting him off his spot. I think right now Pierce Holly just needs to get comfortable in throwing the football again. Lazarick Eatman, the catch. And uh, Doe Ford for about four more yards. There's a little pitch play to Daniels, and the Falcons string that out, bottle him up. Read it well. Read lose three well. there, Bob. Yep. Read that one very well. Alexander Oyewale made the stop, the six-foot senior out of Marietta, California. Oyewale last year had a 40-yard fumble recovery, scoop and score. Well, Bowling Green's defense continue. They need to continue to make Pierce Holly uncomfortable. He drops back with the pressure coming. He goes down in the heat. Just like that. BG comes up with a sack. Falcons, Cassius Howell got in there. Howell led the charge and got immediate help from Ali Saad. We'll see it again right here. There's Howell grabbing it. They're coming in, they're coming in from both sides. They're getting edge pressure. And that's forcing Holly to... He doesn't have any place to go unless he steps up, and there was no place to step up that time. So after the sack, they're looking at a third down and 20. Falcons really putting on the defensive pressure. Run up the middle. Nicely done by Daniels. He got a lot of that lost yardage back. Get out to the 43-yard line. That is a pickup of nine for Kevin Daniels. But yeah. they're looking at a fourth down and 11. I believe Bowling Green called the time. I believe Bowling Green called the timeout. I mean, Scott Leffler sees an opportunity with 3:13 to go to uh, to put more points on, potentially put more points on the board, and, and, and try to come out of this with some good field position. We'll keep it here during the timeout. David Wilson, Bob Generelli, Kirk Ransom, our spotter and statistician in the booth. Braden Pretch, our producer. Thomas Hart, our director. Uh, what a very interesting game so far. Connor Bazelak. Everything is advertised. And, you know, you look at Scott Leffler's background with quarterbacks, no surprise that he's able to attract someone of Bazelak's pedigree. He's, he, knows, he knows how to work with quarterbacks, being a quarterback himself. He knows, he knows how to bring them along. He understands what happened last week and understands how to correct the things that happened last week. Here comes the kick from Jacob Forbath. He's going to fake it, and he's going to run for it across midfield to the 40. He has the first down and more. I, I love that call. It's Australian rules it's, football. Exactly, I love that call. I mean, you're, I mean, this is this is your uh, this is your bowl game, and you're playing an FBS team on the road. You pull out all the stops. Run out of bounds into the Eastern <laughs> Illinois side of the field. You never see hesitated. You never hesitated. They'll mark it at the 34-yard line. So he runs for 23. And boy, what a shot in the arm that is for the Panthers, and they will use the timeout now and talk things over at 2.55 here in the second quarter. Now, now you're potentially looking at, if you can punch this ball in, you're looking at a one-score game going in the half as opposed to potentially you could have been down 28-6. Now, Jacob Horvath, 6'1", 190, a freshman out of Bentley, Australia. Punted the ball four times for an average of 42 and a half yards in their game against Indiana State. He was the conference freshman, freshman of the week. week. Yep. And I believe I read a note, Bob, that that was the first American yes. football game that he had ever seen in person. It was. It was. And, and two of his played four punted him. Yeah. Two, two of his four punts were inside the 20-yard line against Indiana State. So let's see what a play like that does to energize Eastern Illinois' offense. First and 10 from the 34-yard line. 21-6, Falcons. Mirza. A little flip straight ahead. I think that'll go down as a pass. 
to Mirza. Anyway, he has uh, run out of bounds. Uh, not uh, much room to turn the corner there. He got a yard out of all of that. Second down. And uh, we'll call it eight. Football is at the 33-yard line. Center Drew Wilder ready to snap it back to Pierce Holly. Play clock at 10. Holly, the transfer out of Georgetown. Daniels up the middle, but uh, nowhere to go. Ali Saad right there, 6'3", 270. Transfer out of Minnesota. And that was a nice that was a nice play because that had potential. If he busts that, he busts that, he could have gone a long way with that. That leaves the Panthers at third down and seven. They hurry to the line. Three receivers on the right. Not have any more timeouts. Now we're in four down territory too, Dave. Back to throw Holly. Avoids the pressure. Fires a low line drive pass for Dearia Smith, but uh, not really catchable there. Anthony Hawkins providing the defensive coverage. Hawkins last year, 35 tackles from his nose guard position. I, I think they go for it here. They're, they're already, I believe, two for two today on fourth downs. And again, their place kicker is not here, uh, or the one they trust. And uh, Bowling Green's defense did a nice job there making, making Pierce Holly. We'll see what they dial up on fourth down and seven. Late first half, Eastern on the road. They've had a fake punt for a first down on this drive. Holly down the middle, pass caught. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois Panthers. Wow. Diaria Smith. That ball was an absolute rocket delivered by Pierce Holland. That was a rope. He stood in the pocket tall. It was he had he had people all around him. And he just threw a rope. Hit that kid in stride. And it's not bad coverage at all. It's just he he put the ball where it needed to be, and the receiver just walked right into it and walked into the end zone. Smith, the junior out of Lexington, Kentucky. His first TD of the year. Looks like they're going for two. So 21 to 12, a two-point convert here makes it a seven-point game. Holly, another line drive pass back of the end zone looking for Mirza. And it, uh, I believe, was ruled incomplete. Scored it out. So 131 to go. We'll get back to that touchdown pass from Pierce Holly. His second TD of the afternoon. Well, like we talked about, I mean, this offense is going through Pierce Holly, and when he's when he can when he can do things like that and has the time to do that, standing tall in the pocket, they've, they've got the receivers who can get open. Four TD strikes for Holly on the season now. There's the drive chart for Eastern Illinois, the Panthers. A trip over from Charleston, and they are providing a challenge for the Falcons. That was a big shot in the arm after two three and outs, but you know what? Give uh, give their punter credit and Chris Wilkerson for dialing up a uh, dialing up that play. 131 on the clock. BG will get the ball back. They have two timeouts left should they need them. This one will go deep in the end zone. Best kickoff of the day for Daniel Luoma. Luoma, a tight end, who has uh, been their kickoff specialist before and has uh, been uh, forced back in, into that role with the injury to Stone Galloway. Well, Panther punter uh, Jacob Horvath is he's, he's saying, what's so hard about this American football? It's just like Australian rules. Just tuck it and run. Here come the Falcons now. They have been a very explosive and efficient offense today. Uh, keep it on the ground to Teron Keith. Has been the undisputed go-to back today, although Terion Stewart has gotten some timely carries, but it's been Keith for the most part for the Falcons. I, they, it has been, and I think I think they, they've committed to running the football today, but 
It looks like EIU's defense is a little energized off of what just happened as well. Pass caught. That's Fannin. Harold Fannin just rumbling up the left hash mark. Gets the first down and plenty more before he is finally brought down. Tackled by Joel Barrows, the defensive end. Great call on the tight end screen. Bazelak just in and then out of the hands of Hilaire. Bowling Green's receivers are open, Dave. And Hilaire is a special kid. He was there. He was open. That ball just a little too far out of his reach. Bring it down a little bit. That's a completion and maybe more. Bazelak, uh, he can put a little zip on the ball. He can. Good protection. Goes to Fannin on the outside. He'll get out of bounds. Ushered out of bounds by Tyrus Harvey. So that will stop the clock with the ball out at the 44. Fannin's been a big part of the Bowling Green offense today. He sure has. He's got five catches for 79 yards right now. Connor Bazelak, 16 of 19. He'll check down to Keith. Tries to make a man miss. Gets out of bounds at the 46. Gained a yard. And that's what he wasn't, that's what Bazelak wasn't doing last week, is, is understanding what he had and then taking what he what he needed to do and not trying to force the football. Mark Aitken was there to guide him out of bounds. Fourth down and four. The Panthers hold. Unless we see BG pull the fake uh, out of the playbook. They've got an Australian punter. Maybe a battle of down under <laughs> upmanship. Exactly. Here we go. Well, snap it back to Sammy Sir. Nice end over end kick. Mirza uses a fair catch at about the 13 yard line. A 41 yard kick in the air. No return. Sammy Sir right there, number 99. It will be interesting to see what the Panthers do with these 34 seconds. Well, we're enjoying this game today. We thank you for joining us on ESPN. BG with their home opener. Great crowd. The whiteout, very popular among the BG students. We've got ourselves a ball game right now. 21-12. I still keep going back to that missed extra point, Bob. Yep. You never know when something like that happens, how it might affect the game later on. A absolutely. But they, they warned us that kicking was going to be challenging for the Panthers today. Pierce Holly in his second game with Eastern. Hands it off. Nothing fancy there. Kevin Daniels. He'll get wiped out at about the 13-yard line. I think the Bowling Green defense has figured out Kevin Daniels is pretty good. Clock hits 10. I don't think Eastern Illinois will run another play. No. And it looks like these teams are headed into the locker room with a 21-12 score. BG in front here in their home opener at Doit Perry Stadium. Connor Bazelak sensational in the first half. And Eastern Illinois hanging right with their FBS brethren from the MAC. Our halftime show is coming up with more play-by-play -play in just a while. And this here making a bid for it's here at halftime. Let's start with the aforementioned and continues. They are waiting on the second half to get underway. 21 to 12. BG leading Eastern Illinois. Thanks in large part to that young man right there, Connor Bazelak making his second start for the Falcons. We welcome you back to the booth. David Wilson, Bob Generelli, very entertaining game. A couple of late 
pivotal plays for Eastern Illinois in that second quarter, keeping them in the ballgame. Oh, the fake punt, and <clears throat> kudos to Chris Wilkerson for calling that. Pulling all the stops out, letting <clears throat> letting his kids have fun here today, and, and made it a different game heading into halftime. Well, it's been a perfect day so far weather-wise. We're really enjoying this ballgame, and boy, big surprise. We talked about the quarterbacks in the open. They will comprise our highlights here at halftime. Let's start with the aforementioned Connor Bazelak. Well, Connor Bazelak, every problem he had a week ago, he's corrected this week. He's looked very impressive, making a bid for Mac uh, East Offensive Player of the Week honors uh, with his first half play. But Pierce Holly, I'm telling you, this kid's impressive. He's got he's got a, a shotgun for an arm. He sees the field well, distributes the ball well. So I'm very impressed with this young man and what he's doing. And this here, this play here, that's a rope. That's a 31-yard strike. That 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 that's worthy of an NFL Sunday highlight. There is uh, Pierce Holly, and there are the uh, quarterback numbers in the first half. 9 of 13 for Holly, and 17 of 19 for Connor Bazelak. Two touchdowns apiece. And you've got a couple of teams here that uh, have really revamped their roster. And you can look at uh, you know what Scott Leffler has done. Again, this is year five in his rebuilding process. It's only year two for Chris Wilkerson to put his program into place. So you can kind of see that progression. BG may be a little farther along, but I know that uh, Chris Wilkerson and his staff at Eastern, they really like the direction they're heading. Oh, I, I, they absolutely like the direction they're going in. He stressed to us that uh, you get better systematically each week um, as, as you play football. He brought in 12 transfers this year. Uh, two, of them are, two of them are very <laughs> integral today, Kevin Daniels and Pierce Holly. Um, and uh, Eli Mirza is another one who helped them. So, again, I think obviously Scott Leffler is further along at Bowling Green in year five. But Scott's done a nice job of high school and then using the transfer yes. portal. Jack Sauter will approach the football and kick off. And Eastern Illinois will have it. Mirza at the five to start the third quarter. And uh, tried to meander back to the middle of the field, and he was taken down on a tremendous open field tackle by the Falcons. Bowling Green special teams have been really good today. They've, they've pinned, they've pinned uh, the Panthers back several times on kickoffs. Dom Gergurich with uh, maybe the tackle of the day right there. Ball will be marked at the 16-yard line. That's where the Panthers will start things off. Let's see what kind of adjustments uh, the Panthers made at halftime, and let's see what Pierce Holly has in store for uh, the Falcons. I got a funny feeling Kevin Daniels is going to get involved very quickly. Fun afternoon of action. Ready to get back underway here at Dwight Perry Stadium. Good call, Bob. Daniels right up the middle, has the first down. He crosses over that Mac logo and uh, falls down to the turf at about the 28-yard line. Brought down there courtesy of Jalen Husky, the boundary corner. And that's the first time the Panther offensive line has really moved that BG defensive front in a while. Sebastian Perez is getting the start at right guard today. And they're starting a freshman, Nick DeSanto, at uh, right guard, DeSanto, 6'4", 320. They lost Jack Valente due to an injury last week against Indiana State. He's their normal starting right tackle. And, and this, this young man you just mentioned is a freshman, <laughs> a true freshman, starting his first game today. And on the left side, they have a lot of experience up front. As you saw Darren Anders make that stop. Max Steinman at left guard, Chad Strickland left tackle. And they like those two young men anchoring that offensive line. Anders making his first tackle of the day. For he has the first been quiet. team all Mac performer. He has been quiet. We haven't called his name much. Holly all day to throw. And finally finds Justin Bowick. And he steps out of bounds. That's very close to the first down marker. Uh, I think they I think he, they're giving it to him. From the 29 out to the 38. And so that'll be a first down, Eastern Illinois. They started back at the 16-yard line. Good start. Very good start. They need to stay ahead of the chains, not get behind the chains. 
They're trying to get some personnel swapped out here. Play clock at 15 as Holly tries to get uh, everybody set. Two minutes gone by third quarter. Kendi Young is in the backfield throwing a block for Holly. And there it goes down the middle of the field for Mirza. Lays out but can't hang on to it just off his fingertips. But we've got a flag in the backfield. Holly had and Mirza had easily had steps. 54, blue. 54 offense, 10 yard penalty play. Well, they got the freshman. Nick DeSanto on yeah. the hold that time. Uh, again, he's a true freshman. It's his first game. But, I mean, again, another beautiful pass from Pierce Holly. And Merza lays out, just couldn't hold on to it. He beat, he, he beat, he beat his man easily. So they'll be looking at a first and 20 now. They need to get out to the 48-yard line for the first down. Line of scrimmage is the 28. 21-12, BG. Holly, the transfer out of Joy Georgetown, the former Hoya, ready to throw. Line drive pass, it's caught. Mirza holds on to it that time and gets the first down. 20-yard pickup. Stepped up and threw that ball with authority. And again, Mirza found that spot open in the middle in the previous play when he couldn't hold on the ball. He beat the free safety, Lorfus, very easily. Just found that, found that hole in the middle. Yeah, found that hole in the middle of the zone and took a lick once he caught the ball. But it's, it, the Mirza kid, again, a junior college transfer, another impressive addition to Chris Wilkerson's team. Trent Sims there defensively to chop Mirza down. First and 10, Panthers. They'll stick with the passing game. A little screen caught by Anthony Manavis, the tight end. Some uh, a good four yards on the first down play, maybe five. And now Holly's getting on a little bit of a roll. I think they're. I think they I think the Panther offense is uh, starting to get into a rhythm, and Holly is Holly is getting there. He just throws the ball with such authority. This is a calm, cool, and collected bunch right now on offense for Eastern Illinois. Delayed handoff. Up the middle, Kendi Young, number 29 in blue. And he busts off about eight yards for a first down. Again, Trent Sims on the stop. Sims, by the way, the junior out of Toledo who had that 76-yard return for a touchdown last week he, yeah. off a blocked field goal. Panther offensive line does a great job here. I mean, yeah, they sure do. There's, 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 nothing but, there's nothing but space for him to run through. That was an incredible hole opened up by Young. Now they go over the middle. That pass a little bit behind the intended target. Kendi Young was wide open in the flat. Holly didn't see him. He didn't. There's a flag down in the defensive backfield. Ball on the 41-yard line. It was an incompleted pass. The ball was behind the receiver, but I didn't see, I didn't see what the flag might be for. See Scott Leffler's reaction. And Phil Hicks announces the pass interference. All right, let's take a look at it again, Bob. We'll see it all unfold. Well, he's going right there. I guess they, they call it was there was contact, but I don't know that that. Again, he had hands on him, so I guess technically that's pass interference. Now the field corner, Jordan Oladokun, was the guilty party. And that moves the ball to the 27-yard line. We'll have to mark that play mentally, Bob. That's a big one. And now Holly goes down in a heap as everybody was covered downfield. Cassius Howell picks up his second sack of the afternoon. That was that was a secondary sack, no doubt about it, the coverage sack. But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you, you, I mean... It, I guess in the official in the official's mind, it was impeding the uh, receiver's ability to get to the football with the hand where the hands were. And there might have been a hold that we just didn't see. That marks it back to the 34. So that's a big answer for the Falcon defense after absorbing the pass interference penalty. Second down and 16. 10:20 to go. Third quarter. 
Now he gets hit on the blind side and sacked for a second straight time. I believe that was Davon Ferguson. He, he came from the corner blitz, and he... The only thing between him and the quarterback was nothing. <laughs> Holly is going to just get blindsided here. Looked like he peaked maybe at the last second to prepare himself, but Ferguson came in with a head of steam. And credit Holly for hanging on the football because that's, that's the kind of hit that separates the quarterback and the football. Third down and 24 after back-to-back -back sacks. The BG defense rising to the occasion, guarding this lead of nine points. Man open, that's caught. It's Daniels and gets upended. Again, Ferguson is there. He is fired up right now. Got some defensive help from Oladokun as well. But it is fourth down and long now for Eastern Illinois. And they're kind of in that gray area of the field, Bob, where... I think they might be going for yeah. it. I mean, fourth and 15, but... You know, you're 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 at the bull, you're at the you're at the Bowling Green 32 yard line. Third down action here at Dwight Perry Stadium. Big play here for the Panthers. They're out of FCS. Holly eludes the pressure. There it goes downfield. Post pattern down there. Intercepted in the end zone. Tipped and intercepted by Jalen Husky. Well, Pierce Holly did all he could do, Dave. He just had to put the ball up and, and, and put it up for grabs. Hopefully something good happened. But The Falcons get the big INT. They'll bring it out to the 20. And the Falcons will have the ball in a nine-point lead. Well, the Eastern Illinois drive was pretty much snuffed out as opposed to stalling out because of back-to-back -back sacks. And then in desperation on fourth down, an interception ball was tipped away by Trent Sims, who was very active on that uh, defensive sequence for BG and intercepted by Jalen Husky. So first and 10 Falcons at the 20. They dodged the bullet there because Eastern was moving the football down the field. Baseline, up the middle, it's Stewart. Almost lost his footing, kept his balance, and goes forward across the 35 for a big gain, a first down. It's going to be out to the 38. A very nice 18-yard scamper by Terrion Stewart. And again, Dave, they only had 47 yards rushing in the first half, Bowling Green did, but it sure felt like they had a lot more than that because they ran the ball well. Well, Wally made the stop for EIU, BG. First down, they'll go to O.J. Hilaire. And he makes the catch on the boundary line, steps out at the 44. It's a pickup of six. And Bowling Green's defense deserves a ton of credit. They, they bounced back after that defensive pass interference call and responded when they had to because, again, the Panthers the Panthers were knocking. They were, in, they, were, they were knocking on the door, and you put it in there, and it's a whole different game. They're showing blitz here, second down and four. They bring four. Pass is caught, and they get the first down as it was hauled in by Austin Osborne. And he did a nice spin move there at midfield. Got some extra yardage. Here are the, here's the combo that stands out to me, Bob, as we get a second look at this uh, completion. The I mean, great call. That's, that's, that, that's, that's the right call against the pressure package that e EIU was showing. Colby Smith made the stop. Stewart again turns the corner on the right. It's to the 30 and out of bounds. Another nice run of about 18, maybe 19 yards. You've got good protection for Bazelak, A. And B, I have just felt that the routes run by BG receivers have been so crisp today, they have been wide open. They're talented receivers, and yes, they have been open. And that was what with, with, uh, Coach Leffler said about last week. They were open last week, they just didn't get him the ball. So yes, the BG receivers are talented, they are open. This is a handoff to Teron Keith and just had nowhere to go. That time, Eastern Illinois strings that out. 
very well done. Elijah Watt Tolbert got in there and helped make the stop. Elijah Watt Tolbert, the FCS National Defensive Player of the Week after his performance against Indiana State, 11 tackles. And a, and a pick. And an interception. And an interception was, was Conference and National Defensive Player of the Week. Slack takes the snap right on target. There it goes, far side of the field, and a diving catch by Abdul Ibrahim. He can take out a patent on those. Ibrahim has done. I tell you what, I've seen a lot of receivers use the sideline, but he he's done very well using the sideline. I mean, he gets out to the perimeter and and he makes sure he gets that foot down. He does a very nice job of making sure he not only secures the ball, but he's got that foot in bounds. And that touchdown catch was a perfect example of that. Panthers need a defensive stop here. 21-12 BG, third down and three. Bazelak, a short drop, throws it over to the right side, almost intercepted. Again, they were looking that time for the tight end, Harold Fannin, who has been an excellent target today. He's, he's been money today. Fannin has been money today. Looks like Bowling Green's going to go on fourth and three. They're kind of in the same yeah. area of the field where Eastern was earlier. Falcons do have Allen and Naya, their place kicker. They will go for it here on fourth down and three, or at least try to draw Eastern Illinois offsides. They will go through with the fourth down play. Bazelak, line drive pass, first down. Caught by Terrion Stewart. He just drags a couple of Panthers a little farther down to the 13-yard line. That, 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 would, that would fall to the kiss theory. They keep it simple, stupid. That's that, Actually, that was Fannin again, the tight end. Just keep it simple. Dump it over the middle. He's been open. He gets yards after he catches it. And you didn't. You only needed three. You're exactly right there, Bob. That was Fannin, 44. Thought it was uh, Terrion Stewart, but Fannin makes another catch. That goes for 11 yards, tackled by Tolbert. Bazelak will keep it this time around the right end and gets upended at about the six-yard line. He runs for seven yards. Got tackled by Blake Ruffin, the strong safety. Well, that, there's Connor Bazelak using the read option, which we didn't see much of from him last week against Liberty. And uh, if you think about it, the two quarterbacks, I think the thought is Camden, Camden Orth is more of the read, read option quarterback of the two they have. But he, Connor Bazelak did a nice job with that. Well, this third quarter has done an absolute 180. It has. Now it's second down and three. They can get a first down at the four-yard line. They give it to Patterson, and he rumbles to the two, just burrows straight ahead and gets the first down. It'll be first and goal, Falcons. The stop made by T.N. Fridge. All right, here we go. First and goal from the two. That's still Patterson in the backfield. They'll give it to him. He hits the pile, tries to spin left, and Panthers not letting go under any circumstances. Well, this, this is a if, if they can somehow limit them to three three right here. That's that's a that's a big thing. Or. Bowling Green may be the place where even on fourth down, they're going for a touchdown. Tolbert got in there. Yard or two loss there. Second down and goal from the four-yard line. Bazelak to He's throw gone. it. Fade route. Back corner. Pass incomplete. It was there. Great call. But it was there. Levi Gazarek. Gazarek was wide open. Sort of a falling down, trying to make a two-handed catch. Pass was broken up by Russell Dandy. And he, he had Gazarek wide open, and he had he had Fannin out in the flat as well. Fannin actually lined up in the backfield he did. on that play. So now third and goal from the four-yard line. Tight formation. Bazelak looking to throw it, fires it for the goal line, diving catch. Didn't give it to him, one yard line. It's at the one. That was maybe Gazarek again, I couldn't see. I believe it was him. Gazarek, the 
BG football and baseball player. It's a right-handed pitcher on the BG Special squad. Play. Downfield offense. Third down. Now replay third down on the ineligible man downfield as you get a look at Scott Leffler on the sideline. I think, I think Scott's asking, can you tell me who that was? Well, the ball moving backwards now to the nine. Third and goal from the nine. It was on the two-yard line earlier. All right, now they've got Keith in the backfield. See, Hilaire is out there along with Ibrahim. Hilaire and Ibrahim, roommates, best friends, former teammates at Alabama A&M. And we'll get a timeout here. Time out on the field, 3.33 to go in the third quarter. Things still mighty interesting. 21 to 12, BG. They'll strategize. We'll see what they come up with when we come back. Well, the Falcons were poised to punch it in on the two. They've uh, moved backwards to the nine. They're looking at a third down and goal from the nine-yard line, leading by nine. What's on your mind for this play, Bob? Well, I think Scott Leffler really wanted to get make sure he they were all on the same page and what they were going to do. And it's, my, my, my gut is it's, it's something over the middle, in the middle of the field with uh, Fannin, if he's in the game. I haven't. 242 yards passing today for Baseline. And I think Fan is right there out, out left. Yep, kind of in a slot position yep, on slot. the left side. He's in a slot position left. You're exactly right. He's out there on that side with Austin Osborne, Ibrahim, and Hilaire on the right. It will be a pass play. Baselak throws to the back of the end zone and overshoots Hilaire. And it'll be fourth down and nine. The field goal unit will come on for BG. The Panthers got pressure on Bayes last They sure did. And he was smart to just throw it away. Allen Anaya will come out. Line of scrimmage is the nine. So we're looking at a chip shot of about 26 yards. Looks like it'll officially be teed up or held by uh, the holder at the 17. So a 27-yard attempt by Anaya. Holder, Jack Sauter. Here's the kick by Anaya. And no questions asked. He boots that one through 24 to 12. BG, they get points on that drive. And again, Eastern was driving. BG got the big stop on two consecutive sacks. March down and put points on the board. And that's what, you're, that's what you want your offense to do. When your defense comes up big for you, you want your offense to chew up some clock and put some points on the board, obviously. They would like to come away with with, with six or, and or seven, but you, you take the field goal and you you uh, you move into the fourth quarter with a 12-point lead, and hopefully your defense c continues to do what they're doing because uh, Pierce Holly can get them back in the game pretty quickly with his arm. That was a 13-play, 71-yard drive, culminating in the field goal for Anaya, his first of the season. Now Jack Sauter will get ready to kick off, and the Panthers will get the ball back. And they've been able to move it. And, and credit the Panthers, Dave. I mean, they, yeah. BG was running the football. Their offensive line was doing a nice job. And, and, and the few times they tried to run the ball down close, the Panthers stuffed them. Late third quarter on a cloudy day here in Bowling Green, Ohio. Temperature's just perfect for football. Sauter kicks it away, end over end drive, will go out of bounds. And so the Panthers will get the ball at the 35. And not what you want if you're Bowling Green special teams coach. We get the call from Phil Hicks. Out of bounds, take a team. All right, break in the action. Eastern ball when we come back. Stay with us. More to come here on ESPN+. Plus.
State at noon Eastern. In the afternoon, Ball State hosts Indiana State, and Eastern Michigan hosts UMass. All of those games kick off at 2 Eastern time. Then in the nightcap, Toledo hosts San Jose State at 7 o'clock. Catch all of the action on the ESPN app. You'll have that Indiana State Ball State game next week. I will. I'll be in Muncie for that one. 3.23 on the clock, and here come the Panthers now. And they'll throw a pass downfield for Mirza. And you can never fault this young man's effort. He is throwing his body around, could not hold that one in. Not at all. I think as the season goes along, uh, the Holly to Mirza connection is going to play out big for the Panthers. It's a junior college transfer. You can see he's got some ability. And they pressured, they pressured uh, Holly from the backside. He rolled well and threw a nice pass. Good job by Darius Lorfields on the defensive coverage. Second down and 10 to go. A little draw play up the middle for Kevin Daniels. Not much running room there. Might have gotten two yards. He is pushed back with uh, a lot of gusto by Anthony Hawkins. Also in there, Jordan Porter. Porter, a backup defensive end out of uh, Muskegon, Michigan. Uh, the defensive coordinators told us they really like his presence on the field. Yes. And I'm, su I'm surprised that uh, EAU offensive coordinator Joe Davis hasn't gotten the ball more to Kevin Davis in the flat because they did down here, and it resulted in, in, a, in a touchdown. Pierce Holly. He'll get rid of it quickly, and it is incomplete. Looking out to the right for Jason, or pardon me, that was uh, intended. I'm trying to see who the, who was the uh, intended target there, guys. Number I think 20? it was MJ Flowers. Yeah, I think it was Flowers coming out of the backfield. And again, that's a good, that's a that's a big three and out for Bowling Green's defense. It's two consecutive defensive stops for BG. That's really turning this game into the Falcons' favor. They force the punt here. Horvath will stand back at his own 23. The line of scrimmage, the line of scrimmage is the 37. Snap right on the money. Kick with some good hang time. From the 20-yard line. Out to about the 26. Very modest return by Jalen Embry. Embry, the Jacksonville, Florida product. Well defended and well, the Falcons get the ball back now. Two and change left third quarter. And it, it looks like Connor Bazelak's going to finish out the third quarter. Cur curious if we see Camden North. He has put together a very impressive day. As Bazelak starts this particular drive, he's 21 of 26 on the afternoon. He'll dump a screen pass off, and it's Teron Keith, and he's got some running room to the 40. Burst of speed, midfield. There he goes to the 30. Will they catch him? They run him out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. Well-designed screen, and that young man's got some foot speed. He did a great job of getting the ball down the field. But again, I think I think Connor Bazelak is doing so many things differently than from a week ago, and, and just his calmness, his, his efficiency and his calmness in the pocket. I've got that at 59 yards, Bob. And Teron Keith does a great job. I mean, he gets downfield and does a great job. Their offensive line, they, they did a great job making sure that they they didn't they, they held and then released. Russell Dandy did a nice job not giving up on that play and got him out of bounds. This is Terrion Stewart. He tries to bounce to the outside. He's still on his feet, finally ripped down. But the Panthers were trying, trying to bring pressure on that last play, and the best way to, to uh, combat pressure is screen pass. Now it's Anthony Shockey who got to Terry on Stewart. Wait, Stewart hit the turf hard. He'll come off. He did. Wait, one of the great things this week was listening to Scott Leffler talk about Terry on Stewart. You could just tell how fond he is of this young man. Very and much so. How much he has uh, invested in his future. He called him very special kid. There's Fannin, your favorite guy on the day. He, touchdown. I'm telling you, he has been money today. Harold Fannin, Jr. Harold Fannin, Jr. is making his claim for Mac East Offensive Player of the Week. 
He has been open over the middle all day long. 19-yard strike to the tight end. The big man. I mean, he gets behind. He gets behind everybody. Great hands, soft hands. Because that ball was a tad behind him. 30 to 12. With Anaya ready to boot through the PAT convert. And he does. He splits the uprights. It is a 31 to 12 BG lead. As Connor Bazelak continues to throw darts around the field. Harold Fannin Jr., Dave, seven receptions, 109 yards, one touchdown, averaging 50, almost 16 yards every time he touches the football. Bazelak has thrown three TDs to three different targets. Harold Fannin there on the sideline, big number 44. When he hasn't been catching passes, he's been blocking. He, and he, 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 has had, he has had a nice game today. He, he showed up today ready to play. And I think there was, uh, in our conversations with Scott Leffler and his offensive coordinators, uh, there was a, uh, they talked about how they felt like their tight ends were open last week and they just didn't get them the ball. Well, well Connor Bazelag has gotten Harold Keith Jr. the ball today. Or Harold Fannin Jr., I'm sorry. Here comes the kickoff. And Aitken will take it at the 10. Across the 25, nice return out near the 30-yard line. It's a good 20-yard return. So Eastern Illinois will take over with one minute and two seconds to go here in the third quarter. Well, again, you've got the FBS-FCS matchup to take into account. But... BG today has showcased a, a, a very diverse cast of playmakers, which could be a tough matchup when they get into Mac play. I think I think I think Scott Leffler is convinced he has a good offense. He's just got to he's just got to get the ball around. Distri distribution is the key for him. Four man defensive front ready to put some pressure on the Panthers as they give it to Daniels. 23 in blue, electrifying redshirt sophomore out of Glendale, Arizona. Picked up five yards there. Under a minute to go here, third quarter. It's clear if they stay healthy, Bowling Green's got playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. Jalen Husky made the stop for the Falcons. 31 to 12 now. BG has widened out the gap. Mirza, nice yak yards after grabbing that one and got out to the 39. That's a pickup of five and should be good for a first down, but I think we may have a penalty play. Yeah, there's one on the far, far sideline in front of the BG bench. Eagle formation, offense, five in the backfield, five yard penalty. Down. All right. Heard the call there from Phil Hicks. So that play comes back. But again, Eli Merza, you gotta you gotta like what you see out of this young man. They're playing now in that uh, combined conference, the Ohio Valley Conference in the Big South. And uh, this Eastern Illinois team, they have uh, a lot of high hopes to compete. This is a team, a program that. Uh, had only eight wins combined the last five years. So Chris Wilkerson really looking to turn that around. But it's a program that has history, especially sure in does. the FCS postseason, uh, and and, um, and and has and has set talent to the next level. Holly to Daniels. There he goes up the middle. Great run. They opened up a big hole for Kevin Daniels. He was due for he was due for that. They're off the Falcons. Look poised to grab their first win of 2023. We were talking about Eastern Illinois, Bob, and some of their past stars. Uh, how does this grab you? Sean Payton, Tony Romo, Jimmy Garoppolo. 
familiar names at the next level, right? Wow. Charleston, Illinois, the home of Eastern Illinois University. And we've got another good one now in Pierce Holly. First and 10 from the 47 yard line. Daniels, they opened up a hole for him on the left side of the line. Nicely done over there by Chad Strickland to open some space. And, and the last time Bowling Green won a uh, MAC championship, Dino Babers was the head coach here who came here from Eastern Illinois. There's Daniels. Kevin Daniels today, 12 carries, 71 yards. And he also caught a touchdown pass. We're just underway, fourth quarter. David Wilson, Bob Generelli. We're at Doit Perry Stadium, Bowling Green, Ohio. Daniels just rumbling up the middle, chewing up yardage. First down to the 40. That's a pickup of seven. I think they heard us during the break, Dave. Sip helping to make that stop. We talked about the Panther offense need to get Kevin Daniels more involved. Now they've done it on the first two plays here of the fourth quarter, and it's resulting in positive yards. Chase Davis also helped on the defensive coverage there. But Daniels, uh, he is tough to bring down. First and 10 on the 40-yard line of the Falcons. Eastern Illinois ball. They'll throw it to Merza. And uh, caught it, uh, had to kind of come back for the ball, Bob, and then yeah. may maybe got a yard to the 39. Bowling Green, Bowling Green had that play sniffed out. They sure did. They really did. They knew where they knew where the ball was going, and they were right. They were right there. Merza barely had time to turn around after he caught it. Second down and nine. Looks like we have an injured Panthers player. Is that Merza? Well, at the tail end of that play, Eli Merza who made the catch. Was uh, helped off the field. Walking gingerly on that left knee. You'll see the end of the play here, Bob. Evan Branch Haynes finishing off that tackle. It rolls up on him. Just kind of got up uh, on him. And, uh, you know, we certainly wish uh, all the best. You don't want to see anybody get hurt no. and that, in, in that's... any situation, but especially in a non-conference game where uh, you know Mirza will be a key guy for them throughout the season. Nice pass on the far side of the field into open space. Caught by M.J. Flowers. First down yardage. Again, good use of their running backs. It's a deep room. And get, get the ball out in the flat. Get the ball out in space. Use your speed. And that, they, did, they were doing that early, and that they've had success with that. that was but, an 11-yard pickup. And losing Mirza, their, their wide receiver core was depleted to begin with. Yeah, they were already missing Justin Thomas and Cooper Willman today. Daniels up the middle. He just keeps on motoring, those legs churning, and he got to about the 22-yard line, a pickup of six. I see a flag over on the far side, and this uh, will hit Eastern with another false start. Looks like a procedure call. Second down and four as it was. So if they walk this one off, we'll see where they place the ball. Formation, five in the backfield offense, five yard penalty. Repeat. It's the second time we've had the five in the backfield yeah. call. Sounds like it would be a good name for a band. Five in the backfield, yeah. 1248 on the clock. David Wilson, Bob Generelli, Kirk Ransom on stats and spotting today. We appreciate all of Kirk's great work. 31 to 12 Falcons. Eastern Illinois, they have represented themselves well here today. Here's Holly. Drops back to throw. Steps up in the pocket. There it goes, man. Open. That's Smith. Makes the catch. Could not stay upright. Diaria Smith out of bounds at about the 10 yard line. That's good for 23. If he had been able to just keep his balance, he would have taken it to the house. And credit Pierce Holly for that. I mean, he, he gave himself the time for his receiver to get out there and get open, stepping up in the pocket, because BG had pressure coming from both sides. 
Falcon. We got a BG got player down. Yeah, injured Falcon as we see a replay on that. Holly hit right as yeah, he, he uh, let mean, that play go, that he, uh, pass. He, he did a nice job of stepping up and waiting for his receiver to get open. Now for BG, I think that's Jordan Oladokun. I think it, it, might be, it might be cramps. Yeah, so he's walking off, and that's a great sight. So he was the man hurting. 12-23 on the clock here in the fourth quarter. Falcons are coming back out. Now the Panthers came over and huddled up as if it was going to be a timeout, but I think they're going to get them back out there. It's first and goal. First and goal. Pierce Solly, the junior, played his high school ball at at Lakewood High School in Arvada, Colorado. We're heading off across the country to Georgetown and now at Eastern Illinois. Steps up again in the pocket, jump pass, and looking for Darius Smith, but he's well defended, broken up by Trent Sims. And Sims did a nice job because Holly put the ball in the right place. Trent Sims did a nice job with that. And Holly again, Bowling Green's getting pressure on him. They're making him move off his spot, but he's doing a great job of keeping plays alive with his legs and letting his receivers get open. 10 clock stops with the incompleted pass fourth quarter Falcons in control right now Eastern trying to make it interesting down the stretch Holly finds a man open it's caught at the five yard line on a second down throw that's the first time they've targeted tight end Daniel Luoma he had a catch last week just ran him on a crossing route I love those passes to the tight end yeah it's worked for BG well, today with Harold Fannin. You, you asked them about fullbacks, and they said they told you they didn't have any fullback in their offense, but they like big tight ends. All right, third down and five. Actually, third and goal. Third and goal. For EIU. Long discussion. Play clock is at six now. Holly has to hurry. He'll roll, he'll oh. fall. He goes down in a heap, back at the 14-yard line. That play was really hamstrung from the start because they could not get on the same page. And by the time they snapped it off, they were just yeah. trying to beat the uh, play clock. They, and they just barely beat the play clock. I think they snapped it with one. Anthony Hawkins came in there to get credit for the sack. And it's fourth down. Well, they're bringing in the kicker we found out about late. <laughs> <laughs> so this will be Julian Patino, who previously kicked for EIU, but uh, had been a student manager or coach for the men's soccer team, and he's been brought back. He fires it up there, and he boots it through. That is a 31-yard field goal for Julian Patino, the redshirt sophomore out of Mount Carmel, Illinois. He puts three on the board. There he is, number 96. All right, Mac fans, next weekend, we've got another full slate of action on ESPN Plus, Kent State hosting Central Connecticut State at noon Eastern. In the afternoon, Ball State hosts Indiana State in the Hoosiers State Battle. Eastern Michigan hosts UMass. All of those games kick at 2 Eastern time. Then, under the lights, Toledo hosts San Jose State at the Glass Bowl, 7 o'clock Eastern time. It's all on the ESPN app next Saturday. Boy, if you cannot get excited about college football, I don't know. I'm telling you, our our, our number 96, Julian Patino. I mean, we, I was watching him in pregame, Dave. And I knew he had a big leg. I just didn't know how accurate he was. You never know with the soccer player. And he uh, knocked that one through with plenty of room to spare. This one's going into the end zone. Nicely done. Daniel Luoma, number 89 with the touchback. 10.32 to go here in the fourth quarter. Camden North will take over at quarterback, at least for this series. 
Connor Bazelak today, 23 of 28, 419 yards, three touchdowns. So Orth saw him uh, on a couple of plays earlier. He'll keep it on the ground. That's Jason Patterson. I want to thank all of the uh, great crew we have worked with today as we move along toward the finish line. Braden Pretch, our producer. Thomas Hart, our director. Richie Swingley handling our audio today. A2 is Steve Graham, Dwayne Roberts. Also helping out, and uh, great camera work all day long, capturing all the pictures, all the sights here at Dwight Perry Stadium. There's a little screen pass. That's caught by Teron Keith, and he's been running side to side all day, and he opens up some field, gets across the 50, punched out of bounds with a late hit coming into Eastern Illinois territory. That kid is fun to watch when he gets the football in space. And he doesn't, he doesn't mind he doesn't mind changing directions. He ran about 25 yards. And then they'll tack some on due to the late hit. I believe they might get Mark Aitken. I'm not sure. And again, the, the Falcons have weapons. And, uh, and to have a backup like Camden Orth, who's got experience, not only from his previous... Late hit out of bounds. Number three, defense. 15-yard penalty for him and a run. Automatic. First down. So he went against Russell Dandy. Let's see a couple different uh, looks here. He has fun with the ball when he's out in space. And he's, his vision, I mean, again, um, eye discipline and vision. He sees the field. Yep, there's the late hit by Dandy coming in just as he crossed the boundary. Tough for him to stop his momentum there. Orth running and over the left tackle and uh, gets out near the painted numbers and uh, runs uh, almost to the 27. Pickup of six for Camden Orth. And very much a strength for Camden Orth. He's not, he's not afraid to put his shoulder down and run over people. He did that in his first carry last week against Liberty, ran over one of their linebackers. He'll stand in the shotgun formation. BG with the commanding 16-point lead right now with under nine to go, fourth quarter. Home opener for the Falcons, and it has gone well. There's a pass right on target, all the way down near the goal line, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Austin Osborne. Uh, they, they may be bringing that one back, Dave. Yeah. Okay, so now they may say he's down at the one. Yeah. I thought I saw one official you throw did. their arms up. You did. The, far, the official on the far sideline had, had him down at the one. Boy, that one delivered right on the money, right into the breadbasket. Yeah. And Osborne just a little short on that lunge. Yeah. His elbow's down right there. First and goal from the one-inch line. Orth hands it to Stewart. Second effort. And in he goes. Touchdown, BG Falcons. Terrion Stewart. Terrion Stewart, welcome back to the Falcons. 37 to 15, BG. And Camden North came in and made that look easy, didn't he? Picked up right where Bazelak left off. He did indeed. Marched him down the field. Completed both of his passes. Kick up and good by Anaya. And so seven more on the board for the Falcons. They are cruising in their home opener. More to come after this timeout. BG after a five play 75 yard drive. There's Terrion Stewart, the Memphis, Tennessee product. 
Latest high school ball for the Sandusky Blue Streaks. And uh, after a year off to get things kind of straightened out academically, and he is he is uh, back now. Uh, although he was always engaged, right. following the team, watching film, getting better. Uh, but, uh, boy, what an impact he's made today. He, he's a favorite of, uh, of Coach Scott Leffler, and, and the BG offensive staff has gotten their running backs involved today. Stewart, 51 yards, two touchdowns. Teron Keith, six receptions, 123 yards. Kickoff ends up out of bounds. Lazarick Eatman was over there, ready to try to bring it back, but and and I think if he yeah, I think if he lets that go, they're back at they're at the 35 yard line. Yeah, he did he did uh, gain possession, and so they're saying the ball will be Eastern's at the six. Right. He gained possession and stepped out of bounds. He should have let that ball go out of bounds on its own. They start at their own 35. Started to mention our camera operators earlier. Sam Baldwin working with us up here in the booth. Kevin Raiderman, Trey Coopwood, Dan Wagner, Nathan Schick, all uh, doing a great job today. Appreciate all the fine work of our crew. Get uh, the rest of our uh, team uh, mentioned a little bit later on. 8.33 to go. Fourth quarter here at Dwight Perry Stadium. 38-15, BG. Here come... The Panthers down. Holly from the end zone. Post pattern right down the middle of the field. Leaping catch. A completion for Eastern to Dwayne Cooks. Well, that's a good way to get out from the shadow of your own goal post. Cooks with his first catch of the year. It's a 35-yard reception. Ran a simple post. Cooks out of Tulsa. Back to throw, Holly. Goes a pass across the field. It is caught by Justin Bowick. Bowick tackled by Jordan Oladokun of BG, but back-to-back -back completions for Pierce Holly. Holly's now 18 for 26, 226 yards and two touchdowns. So, Jelly, uh, he's been impressive today. Very. Just outshadowed or in the shadow of Connor Bazelak, whose numbers are just... Uh, Otherworldly. Holly trying to avoid the sack. Again, uses his legs. The pass broken up right at the last second. Nicely done by BG's Jalen Husky. And Darren Anders, I mean, he just ran over people. <laughs> I mean, look. We'll see Look at this, Dave. Here. Darren Andrews comes in. He just runs over that running back trying to block him. There was no stopping him. And like he got a hand on the ankle of Holly, but he got away. He did, but he forced Holly, he forced Holly That's right. to turn and move. Definitely affected the play. Absolutely. Second down and 10 from the Falcons' 49-yard line for EIU. Again, pressure coming immediately on the blitz, but Holly knew he had to get rid of it quickly. He does so to Daniels and gets uh, out across the 40. I think he got the first down. He did. They're moving the chains. He got the first down. 11-yard pickup to Kevin Daniels. Again, he is a transfer out of northern Arizona where he is uh, phenomenally successful, 1,200 yards. Rushing. I think he was. Was he beast, big sky freshman of the yeah, year? Yeah, that's right. A couple of years ago. 1,263 yards that season. Holly in trouble. He got rid of it with the pressure coming and a little bit short of his hit intended target way over there on the far side of the field. That was uh, Lazarick Eatman. Holly could hear the footsteps of Cassius Howell coming. He already has two sacks on the afternoon. Bowling Green has consistently bought pressures on bo from both sides, both edges. So, uh, but I'll tell you what, that Darren Anders coming up the middle was the first time you saw that all day where they stuffed him up the middle. did give him a chance to where he could step up. Anders is one of those players, Bobby, might not always get the, the stat or the, the sack or the tackle, but he affects the play. Somebody else ends up cleaning it up. You're, you're absolutely right. Daniels in motion. He might be the check down man. There it goes. He caught it. 40 to the 35. 
thrown out of bounds. Oh, who was that on tackle? He did a great job because he didn't let he didn't let Daniels turn turn and get upfield. That's uh, Brock Horn, number two. He did a nice job. Goal linebacker. If Daniels is able to turn and get upfield, I mean, this is a uh, he gets ahead of steam. Well done. Nice open field tackle. Third down and six now for the Panthers of Eastern Illinois. Eastern may walk out of here with a loss, but uh, they've shown some signs of being a pretty impressive offense with Pierce Holly leading the way. Delayed handoff to Flowers, and uh, BG stayed home, and they were able to knock him down. Again, Jalen Husky in there on the stop. And again, with the Indiana State win, an impressive win, and the way they've played today, I think they're sending a message to the uh, Big South OBC that um, Eastern Illinois is going to be a team that's going to be an interesting uh, interesting team to play this coming season. They're not the 2-9 and nine team of a year ago. Got a spread formation here on fourth down and seven from the 36 of the Falcons. They'll try and protect Holly. There goes the pass, and it was almost intercepted. In uh, fact, the BG defender goes down. I believe that was Ola Doken who tried to jump the route, and then he might have come down on his ankle. Yeah, he he, he, he saw the end zone. <laughs> he was jumping the route. He saw the end zone. Yeah, that would have definitely been a pick six, but he's going to need some attention. And so we'll pause while they take a look at Ola Doken who broke up that play and it gives the ball to BG on downs. Plus wings just $12.99. Well, after uh, Jordan Oladokun was shaken up, he's going to head back to the locker room. We think, speculation here, but we, we think it was just a cramp. It did not look like he turned his ankle but uh, made a great defensive play. And now the Falcons take over, and they just want to get this one to the finish line, Bob. They keep it on the ground. And smart move on, on Bowling Green's part. Get you, and get your get your offensive line and your running back some reps. I think we saw the first carry of the day for Payshon Wimberly. He picks up nine yards. Welcome to the game. Again, all their running backs have been involved today. He is out of Whitmer High School in Toledo. 30 in white. See if we get on the ground. Jamal Johnson gets the carry. 5'10", 195 pound junior out of Frankfurt, Illinois. We're gonna start uh, getting some second, third stringers in. This is this is where Scott Leffler gets to see some kids in real game action that he that you ordinarily wouldn't get a chance to see and couldn't see, obviously, a week ago. North hands it off on a sweep to the far side. And, uh, they string that out, Eastern Illinois getting there. Mark Aitken made the stop. EG putting it in the hands of Jalen Embry. Again, uh, we salute our crew. Dylan Ureño with uh, some great graphics today on our broadcast. John Fritz, Grant Mills, Matt Stein, Sam Fisher, Sylvia Torres, Kyle Clore, Jake Thorne, Rebecca Fletcher rounding out our great crew today from Tupelo Honey in Indianapolis. And we appreciate all of their fine and professional work and producing our game today, led by Braden Pretch. Up the middle, just picking his way forward. Nicely done, out to the 40-yard line. It's a nice gain into Eastern Illinois territory and a first down. Nick Mosley, number five, is a junior out of Pick Central High School in the Columbus area. And situations like this gives uh, gives the BG staff uh, a better a better idea of what their depth looks like as they head into <clears throat> the meat of their schedule coming up. Shaking up Eastern player there. You see him on a seated position. 
And also with home games like this, you dress more. So you want to give those kids an opportunity to get on the field and play. Blake Ruffin, who's the man shaking up. You see Blake right there out of the great city of Louisville, Kentucky. Bob, we're heading down the home stretch. Let's put on uh, the head coaching hat on both sides. And we'll start with Eastern Illinois. If you're Chris Wilkerson, what are you taking out of this game on the positive side? Uh, your quarterback wasn't a one-hit wonder from a week ago. He's he's the real deal, and he's going to be he's going to be the key to your offense. And Kevin Daniels, and you've got a, you do have a deep running back room. So offensively, you're going to be okay, depending on your receiver situation. First and ten, Falcons. They've put 38 points on the board. And they keep it simple, right in between the tackles. And Nick Mosley, number five. All right, Scott Leffler. You, your quarterbacks are headed in the right direction. You did a 180, and that's what you wanted to accomplish this week. You, you went from 137 yards passing last week and five interceptions to 25 of 30 for 368, 368 three touchdowns today. So that's a positive. And your defense continued to get better. They played well last week. They played even better this week. Again, Jamal Johnson lines up in the backfield with Cam Orth. We're down to 220 and counting. Johnson bouncing, shaking a tackle, and down he goes at about the 27-yard line, 10-yard run. They'll move the chains. We'll hit the two-minute mark here. Thank all of the great folks at uh, BG for hosting our broadcast today. We thank... Uh, the uh, sports information directors from each school, all the coaches who they were great all talked week. with us. So we, we had great hospitality, and this has been a fun game to watch, Bob. Always great working with you, my friend. I enjoy it, Dave. Second time we've had a chance to work together. I've enjoyed both. 143 and counting. Falcons about to wrap up a home win here at the Doit. Lights are on. It's been cloudy all day, but... It's been dry, very comfortable. That's Wimberly again. Moves laterally, gets out of bounds. Clock will stop again for those joining us late who might not have gotten in on the party. Connor Bazelak today in his first appearance here at home in a BG uniform. 23 of 28 today. 319 yards with three touchdowns. I think earlier I got excited, Bob, looking at the small font and said 419. But <laughs> it is small font. 319 yards, three touchdowns. I don't think Connor will mind. No, I, I, he'll, he'll take it. But uh, excellent performance by the young man from Dayton. Wimberly. Wimberly is a guy they are very excited about. By the way, Wimberly was very active on special teams last year with three blocked punts that led the nation. He was, and he saw some action last week in the running back spot against um, Liberty. There's the upcoming schedule for BG. The Wolverines waiting in the wings. Yeah, that's always a fun matchup for uh, for anybody, especially Scott Leffler being a Michigan man to go back up there and play the number two team in the country. And then the next week you come home and play the uh, defending East Division champions in the MAC in Ohio. They are really excited about what's going on here at BG and what Leffler has done and his staff. They've built what they call a very good culture, and it's now translating into plays and points and wins on the field. And he has, he has his numbers back up, and that's what's exciting is that he's got a roster he likes. That will probably be the final play of the game, and the handshakes will begin at midfield. Scott Leffler, Chris Wilkerson will meet, as will all the players. And the Falcons fans rise to show their appreciation as the Falcons capture the home opener in decisive fashion behind an electrifying performance from quarterback Connor Bazelak. The final score today at Doit Perry Stadium, BGSU 38. Eastern Illinois, 15. Bob, final thought. 
Scott Scott Leffler's got to feel good going into Michigan that his quarterback room is headed in the right direction. And that, that I think that was his biggest concern after last week. They straightened out a lot of their problems. And uh, I, think, I think that's got to make the whole BG coaching staff feel good. Well, that will wrap up our coverage from Dwight Perry Stadium. We thank you for joining us. A job well done by our producer, Braden Pretch, and our director, Thomas Hart, and all of our crew. For Bob Generelli, this is David Wilson now saying goodbye from Bowling Green, Ohio. Congratulations again to the Falcons. You've been watching the Mac on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.